Hey there, everybody. Chris Beatty's here from Chromer Talks Magazine, and it's the last Friday in July, and I hope you know what that means. It's Ball Customer Day, or Ball Field Day and Landscape Day, and Customer Day, as they call it officially. We're here at the Ball Cafe. Hey, Greg, how's it going? We're here at the, at the cafe where there's all kinds of things going on, displays. That's where you hook up for tours, things like that. But actually, the entrance to the, the whole festivities in the gardens is about uh, 47 miles that way way over there and uh, we're gonna hike that way right now and we're gonna see if we can find Annabelle herself she's in charge of all this you know and she's out there greeting customers and we're gonna get a few words to find out uh, just what's important in the garden this year come with me other end of the garden, the uh, southwest corner where Anna Ball and uh, her staff are busy greeting customers as they roll in for customer day. We're going to see if we can catch up with her. She's here with some of her family, her daughters, Susanna, and her sister-in-law is there. And uh, we'll see if we can corner Anna. Anna Ball! Anna Ball! <laughs> <laughs> Anna knows that I corner her out here every year only to, to give you the chance to, to say just a little bit about customer day number. Well, we don't even know what number it is. Well, right? I just had uh, a man come up to me, uh, Carl Hornung from Shady Hill, and he gave me some slides from customer day 1960. The and, year I was born, by the way. I should see if oh I'm in there. Oh my gosh. And, and just before, I had told somebody that the first customer day was 1965. So he proved Ooh, me wrong. That's good. We, so we, it's maybe, at least 1960. So we're narrowing it down. If anybody knows, if anybody has photographic evidence that they were out here in a fedora with a pipe right. in the 50s, we right. want to see with about it. Right. Yeah. So a uh, couple of highlights we're going to see out there. She's got her... Ch beacon. Beacon. That's our big thing for this year. It looks terrific. That's the new Impatience, the new impatience, impatience. Downy Mildew Resistant Downy Impatience. Downy Mildew Resistant, looks we'll take, fantastic. We'll take a look at that. Looks fantastic. The Echinacea, the Sombreros look absolutely wonderful. Um, they've just been blooming forever. And we've got some really cool vegetables that everybody's excited yeah, about. Nice. Some really nice vegetables. So make sure you see those and taste them too. All right. Well, flavorful. must I? Me eating in the garden? Yes. Please. <laughs> Imagine that. In the garden. All right, Anna. Thanks so much. Good. We're we're looking forward to seeing what we've got out there. Let's go, Jen. Okay. It's all on the record right. now, Anna. <laughs> all right. Well, Anna told us. We had to t t look at Beacon Impatience first. In fact, I think she said Beacon three times before she told us to go look at them. And so I found Jim Kennedy, who is the sales manager for Ball Seed, knows as much about Beacon Impatience as probably anybody does. He's also tall and looks good on camera. And then Jim led us all the way around to the very back of the garden to a bed I didn't even know existed, a beautiful shade bed. He said the beacons look spectacular out here. Jim, you're right, they do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, this is a great bed of Beacon Impatience here in almost full shade, and it was planted back in uh, well, the early down. part of June. Now these, now Beacon is to refresh everybody's memory because because I've written about it, I've done videos about it. It's Impatience Downy Mildew Resistant, highly resistant, in fact, right? Yeah, that's correct. And. Uh, it certainly looks it here. We haven't. We don't see any sign of disease. Do you think if we planted uh, super elephants out here, they'd be looking this good? Uh, I think, Chris, <laughs> if you'd have planted super elephants out here, I think that they'd be gone by now. Uh, we had a wet June. We had a lot of rain this summer. Uh, the weather patterns and the, everything has been conducive for downy mildew to be impacting the impatience in this area. And I think if we had some super elephants, they'd be they'd probably be in pretty tough shape. And the beacons are holding up extremely well not only here in the West Chicago Garden, but we also have a research station close by in Elburn where the beacons look excellent. We recently had an open house at Penn State and they look excellent there as well. And throughout the East Coast from Florida all the way north, the beacons are looking really good in the shade garden. So, so they've been holding up the way your earlier trials and research has said they should. Now they're out in like real landscapes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, they've been holding up to the promise of highly resistant to downy mildew, and right. you see the plants really hold up under extreme pressure and continue to perform 
the way impatients can always perform for those of us that know impatients, the pre-downy mildew, <laughs> yeah. they're performing the way that we would expect them. So to. the big question now is how, what's the introduction plan? When are growers and retailers going to be able to get them? Yeah. Well, we have uh, we have numbers on the screens right now on our web track with Ball Seed, and uh, we're booking. So you could order we're open right for now. Business. You yeah, can order we're booking we're, seed and plugs. Yes, seed and plugs. We're booking beacons right now, and we have a really robust plan for our plug network, uh, with access to all the varieties, mixes, and everything in our plug network, and also seed on the shelf. And ready how to about go. globally? I've got viewers in South Africa, Australia, England. Yeah, the big beacons, impatient country. Yeah, yeah, beacons available is bred and produced by Pan American Seed, and that's going to be available worldwide uh, in 2020. Well, Jim, these look fantastic. We're going to check back out uh, through the season, see if they stay looking fantastic. But uh, what are the odds? Pretty good. Pretty good. All right, yes. thanks, Jim. Appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you. All right. Well, Ball uh, has some vegetative breeding companies as well, Ball Floor Plant and Selecta. And interestingly, there's a guy over here who's got both those logos on his short shirt. He must be important. He is. He's Jason Twadell, the sales and marketing manager for both those brands. And you're going to show us, I think, three different varieties, starting with Floor Plant, right? Yep. And a new geranium series? We'll start here with the Galaxy Geranium. So this is a new series uh, that we introduced at CAST this year. Uh, this replaces our Allure series, which was our most vigorous series of geraniums. There's nine colors in the assortment, and uh, you know the, the real big message here is, is big vigor and exceptional garden. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good zonals out there right now. When you're putting out a whole new series and calling it Galaxy, what's the main thing you're looking for to really be competitive? So really what we're looking for here is exceptional garden performance. So whether that's in the pot or in the ground, we wanted... Uh, you know, industry-leading garden performance in terms of a, a zonal geranium, something that would compete even with the interspecific geraniums that are out there and on you, the market. You got to have a dark red. Yeah. This day, this day and age. Yep. So uh, we've got a, a dark red here. We've also got uh, galaxy red. Um, we've got a, a really strong white. And one of my favorite colors here is this watermelon. It's, those are beautiful. It's a unique color, and it no, really just stands out on pops. You, Jen likes violet over there. It's a girly color. Both um, the violet and, and the purple. And are these interspecific? They, so they, they look like they've got a little bit of ivy blood to me. Yeah, so you based got a little, on the bit that, shape. little bit of that look. These are getting marketed as zonal geraniums. So, I mean, within our breeding programs now, a lot of the stuff has been... Um, has been bred and, and there's some interspecific in, in a lot of this stuff at this point. All right, next but I think... These, we're calling them zonal geraniums, that's the way we're, we're marketing them. Well, and the, the flower power is outstanding there. So, uh, petunia I think you wanted to show us, where's yeah. that? Yeah, so let's, we'll go up here up front and we'll talk about Colorush petunia. All right. All right, petunias, I see them right here. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about Colorush petunias. So this year at CAS, we introduced uh, our new colors of Colorush. CAS, that's spring trial, pack trials for those of you who don't know. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> the California spring trials. Right. Uh, we introduced our four new colors um, of Colorush. And here you can see we've got our new Merlot star. We've got our new purple, watermelon red, and then the new color a white. white. A white is very important, right? Uh, yeah, had, had you had white in the series before? We had not, so this one is new. Uh, what we had in the series was on the top here, we've got a blue and pink vein, and then color rush pink as well. Those were the three we had in the series. So adding the four new colors, we've expanded to seven colors overall. Including the star type. Yeah, yeah. and we've got the bicolor with the Merlot star now. Um, really the, the message on color rush is vigorous, uh, petunias for landscape performance, uh, garden performance, just a, a really strong product in the garden for the for the consumer. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're smaller flowered, so it's not a grandiflora type, it's not a yeah, big, crazy, it. showy kind of a thing. It looks very uh, super colorful. I mean, yeah, no lodging out of the color. top or anything. So even though those flowers are a little smaller, you, you just see this big mass of color because there's so many of them. All right, so think, uh, think landscape color, big beds. Yep. Big container sizes, so think municipal planters or large baskets, um, and great in-ground performance for uh, for the garden as well. And the white, it's early and it's super strong in the in the garden. So I've got this one in my house, and it's you know I've got one plant and it's already two feet across. And you got to have a white. You can pair it with any of these, I think, pretty much, and uh, and yep. have a beautiful combo. All right. Last but not least, I think you said some cal some uh, some uh, calibracoa, which are over here. The uh, the mini famous. 
which have been around a long, long time. Yeah, so the, the many famous uh, caliber killers obviously been around a long time for Selecta. Uh, we introduced the Uno series uh, recently, which is our early and compact series. Last year we introduced Uno Double Pink Tastic. Oh, that's beautiful. And this year we've got Uno Double Plump Tastic. Look at the hat. Now that habit, you didn't you didn't come in here a week or two ago and shave this to get no. it like perfect like that. No, right? that's that's the Uno habit. It's <laughs> it's nice and round. This is our our compact and early series uh, for Selecta. Right. So that's and the, the natural and these habit. are Selecta. The other two we looked at were Ball Flora plants. That's correct. So that's correct. So that. Anything with the, the tastic name, we call this plum tastic. We've got that bicolored double flower. So you've got pink tastic and plum tastic, and then we'll go down here and we'll look at the other new one uh, with that tastic name. We'll trip on the hose, Jen. Uh, we are. So in our Neo series, we've got double orange tastic. So Neo orange tastic is is that same look. You've got that double bicolor. Uh, but it's in the Neo series, so you've got more vigorous. So I was going to ask Neo versus uh, Uno. Yep. Neo more vigorous. Yep. So this is going to be our more vigorous series. Um, great for 10, 12 inch hanging baskets, a little bit bigger container size. You got any tricks for remembering which of the two does which? Uh, well, Uno is early and compact, so we, we <laughs> stick with that as, as you know, kind of the messaging. And then Neo is, is our more vigorous series. Um, yeah, so it's Uno's Neo. and Neo's. Neo is like Neo. Yep. I've got to work on how to remember those two. But I'll get it. You'll quiz me later. Uno, you know, <laughs> Uno's one, right? So it's a little oh, bit smaller. One. Yeah. Neo. Uno is early and compact. There you go. All right. Jason, thanks so much. Yep. Good thank work you. work on these. Appreciate it. Right. Neo, Uno. I'll, I'll figure it out. Well, we come into a shade structure, which must mean we're looking for some, some shade plants. Uh, and in this case, from Ball Ingenuity, and Ball Ingenuity is the, uh, the division of Ball that brings in third-party genetics. Ball breeds a lot, but they don't breed everything. And we're going to meet a new young guy, Ryan Stahl, who's over here. Ryan, how's it going? Good to see you. You're going to tell us about this pretty beauty that we yes. saw at Spring Trials, mm -hmm. Betulia. Am I pronouncing that right? You are, yes. Betulia. Betulia. Begonia. Tell mm -hmm. us about Betulia. So Betulia is a homolus that is really compact. It's a homolus type. Yes. Okay. Uh, really, really branching, uh, really, really heat tolerant. It really will stand up to just about any heat that you can throw at it. It does need to be full shade. Um, we have four different colors. Uh, so we have the bright pink, the candy pink, the red and then a light pink, which I believe is around the other side of the trellis here. All right, and it is a very, it stays this size. It stays this size. It's very tight, compact, mm -hmm. and um, and where would you think consumers would, would use this? I could see it in a window box, I could see it on a little front porch. Uh, it needs to stay in a smaller container. Uh, so any little four inch, six inch uh, little pot anywhere you could stick one of those, I think it would do just fine. Beautiful. How long would it last indoors, like in a window sill, do you think? Indoors? Uh, that's a good question. Depends on how good your grower is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Betulia uh, begonia. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I saw one over here. Yes. Oh, it's attracted more attention than just me. Look at the ladies clamoring around this like, like they're butterflies. <laughs> attracted. Wasn't that poetic? Look at this. To the, I love this as well. You guys love this? Yeah, this I is love this. Diamantina, is that correct? Yeah, Diamantina, the opal orange sunrise. This is a Diplodenia. Mm -hmm. Diplodenia. And I've never seen one in that color before. That is just the most beautiful, like mango, tangerine. It's just tropical yes. orange. Tell, what can you tell us about the, the whole Diamantina collection here? So the Diamantina uh, Mandevilla line here, we have a whole bunch of different colors ranging from very vigorous to more of a bush type. Uh, this one is right in about in the middle. Um, it's really, really striking flowers, really, really uh, heavily flowering, and it just kind of stands out as opposed to all the other mandevillas you can see. And I really love the uh, the, the display here, these curved uh, trellises, mm -hmm. the way you've just made a wall of them with all different colors. This would be a great idea on a patio, mm -hmm. at a restaurant, in your oh, garden yeah. center. So it's not just about new varieties out here. It's some of the things you can do with them as well. Exactly. Ryan, nice yeah. work. Good, Thank you. Good to meet you. That's uh, really pretty. Orange sunrise. Well, Anna said we should be on the lookout for vegetables, and we got the guy right here, the account manager yeah. for vegetables here for, for Pan American Seed, Josh Kirschenbaum. And Josh, you're going to show us uh, three or four of the new introductions in the hand-picked vegetable line, right? That is absolutely correct. We have some very exciting new introductions this year, and you mentioned vegetables, but I'm going to start with the herbs. Is basil a vegetable? 
You know, I don't. I'd consider it an herb. <laughs> Personally, if you want to call it a vegetable, All you're more right. than welcome. Herbs too. and vegetables. We're talking here. Right, let's be, right, right. Let's be correct here, but. And I love all of our new interjections, but this is one that I'm super duper excited about. So this is Everleaf Emerald Towers. And the thing about basil is, is that it's delicious. We like to cook with it a lot in the summer, but once it starts flowering, it stops producing leaves. Right. And so it kind of fizzles out, the flavor changes a little. So we have bred Everleaf Emerald Tower to be the latest flowering basil from seed. This will flower potentially 10 to 12 weeks after a standard basil, which means that that's you like can a, have up to three months exactly. longer. Yep, yep. <laughs> and that's even like if you were to pick it routinely and cook with it, um, you're kind of keep preventing the flowers from coming by mm -hmm. pinching it as well. So it could even go like an entire summer without flowering, and which assume, means that you're going to have summer long uh, leaf material. Right. That's, so that's sort of the Everleaf portion. And I assume Emerald Towers, this is a pretty upright It's a uh, very vigorous columnar. variety. Mind you, I'm partial, but I think that it's very ornamental too. I think you could incorporate it into your ornamental beds if you wanted to as well. Yeah, and Hitch is showing it here in a container, yep. great on a patio and out in the garden yep, absolutely. As, as well. Yep. All right, what do, you, what do you have that goes really good with basil? Well, you know, oddly, I don't have any mozzarella plants out here today, <laughs> but I do have some tomatoes. That's in the back room in the breeding Exactly, house, yeah. Give us a plant. few years, it's on the way. <laughs> Just joking. Um, okay, so we have Artemis tomato as well as Helix tomato, and there are two red cherry tomatoes. The differences between the two, Artemis has a very high amount of leaf mold resistance. That's very good for areas that are very hot and very high humidity. Um, I gotta say the flavor on Artemis is one of my favorites, and I will go and grab yeah, you one right that's just now. One there. I know Jen Zerko wants to try an Artemis. There you go, there you go. Oh, that's outstanding. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really nice. Really sweet. Not, yeah, it's, not too acidic at all. No, just a, just this, a hint, but that's if sweet. If you like sweet tomatoes, this is the one for you. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yep. Jen? Oh, yeah. Sugary. <laughs> Good. And then Helix has the highest amount of late blight resistance currently available yeah. in a tomato. Late blight is a disease that is very, very... Uh, problematic in the northeast, in the midwest, and along the eastern uh, coast too. So sometimes and, you get into the height of the season, August, September, and your tomato gives out, you blame yourself, right? but it's often the disease, yes, right? Exactly. This, this will yep. keep going. And this also has a really nice flavor too. It's more of an elongated... And, and Anna did give us permission to uh, eat our way through the garden. Well, perfect. Again. Good. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's a little milder. It is. A little Not more acid, sweet. a little less sweet. Yeah. Kind of nice and complimentary. You might, I might cook with that one and snack on that one. That's a yes, perfect Did way I get to right? utilize Beautiful. both. All right. All right. Now let's move over to our new patty pan squash called Lemon Sun. A patty pan wait, squash. Wait, 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 wait. Let me go oh, over sorry, here. Sorry. There sure, we go. Sure. So patty pans are. You can harvest them any, they're just, you would cook as you would like a zucchini. I can pick it that um, tiny. You can pick it that tiny, then you don't even have to cut it. You just throw it into your stir fry, you can steam it. Did you leave a little blossom in and you can, there? Yeah, it does, yeah. but you can easily just pick it oh, off too. Okay. So a lot of the yellow patty pans that are out there oftentimes will get a green splotch on the blossom end. This will stay a solid yellow. The other nice thing that I really like about Lemon Sun is that it produces a lot of male flowers too, which means that if you wanted to use it to make um, edible squash stuffing blossoms, the, stuffing the yes, blossom with some nice ricotta, frying it. <laughs> um, hungry, then, Josh, I know, I'm sorry. It's almost <laughs> lunchtime, right? <laughs> um, and this thing just produces a ton, a ton of fruit. Um, I think if you harvest it routinely, uh, you will get lots and lots of fruit off of it. All right, we're going to look at a couple of peppers too, but I think we're running out of time here. I but know, you've got a couple like of new to, peppers, just right? One, I'll talk about one right. really quick. I'm a little verbose when it comes to my vegetables. <laughs> you do love your veggies. I do, I do. And I am going to even harvest, so this is orange marmalade, which is our new bright orange bell pepper. It starts out green, ripens to orange, has bacterial leaf spot resistance. Oh, you've got one in there for I us. I do, and this is like one of the first ripe ones of the season, and I like you guys so much that I am going to harvest it oh, for you. Oh, that is gorgeous. Yeah, it's a really nice medium size, very early to mature, nice thick walls, and if you'd like to try it too, I mean, we harvested it, you're going to Eat it like an apple? Feel free. Yeah. Or an orange. <laughs> <laughs> it's orange. Mm. Oh, that's sweet. Good, yeah, it's a really Beautiful. nice. Beautiful. Yep. Jen, you want a bite? 
Uh, maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I got to finish the whole thing, but that's yeah. okay. Josh, thank you, my thank friend. Thank you very much. I appreciate and you good stopping luck with by. The, with the vegetables and the herb. <laughs> and the herb, exactly. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm. Well, it's summertime here at Ball, but mum season is coming up fast. In fact, by the time you watch this, maybe it's behind us and you're growing poinsettias. I don't know, but Ball does have a mum division called Ball Mums, and Cindy Drumgool is all things Ball. She said it's her or mums is her title, right? That's it. That's what I do. And one of the things you, you're showing out here is graphical tracking for garden mums. Yes. I've used to doing it for poinsettias for years, but I haven't really thought about doing it for garden mums. But you guys have been working on that, yeah? Yes, we have. So with Dr. Will Healy and Todd Cavins, we've put together a nice um, Excel sheet that you can download. That's and on the website. It's on the website, and you guys are going to give them links to figure <laughs> out how to we'll get there. out how to do that. But basically, it kind of shows over here, this is how you start out. You go out in the field where you got them growing, and Will Healy designed this very simple stick that you use to determine your starting and finishing height. So if you want to finish at say a nice 18 inch mum, how do you do that? Okay, so you go, you download the tool and there's spots there where you put in your initial height, you put in the height that you want it to be, and then you put in how many weeks you All want right. it to grow. Starting height down here, finish height 18 inches. Yep. I got eight weeks to do it. Yep. That will give me that line that shows that where I'm you on need track. to be. Week, week by week. You measure week every by week. week. Right? And then it also will show you each week a number for where you should actually be. So you go out and measure every week to see if you're on track or not. And if you're above, you give me recommendations to slow them down? Right. You can reduce the feed. You could do B9 or bonsai. And if you're below. All right, my plants are short. Help! Oh. <laughs> Give them some food. Do something. Get them up there. Get All them right. back on track. All right. And again, we're going to put the link down where you can find that on the Ball Seed webpage. Dig in a couple of layers, and there'll be all that information you need, the tool and everything. And definitely check out the STEM podcast by Will. That's right. Will does have a, a podcast. We'll put a link to that as well, where you can hear him talking. Yes. All about this uh, specific thing. About this and all other things mum. So great, great information. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Miss All, all right. Things Mums. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, Anna told us to keep our eyes open for vegetables, and to me, that means burpee. And we found the burpee corner, the burpee patio. Jason, what are we dealing with here? This is a nice burpee little spot. Deck. The burpee deck out here. It's a new spot in the ball gardens, and I'm with Jason Force, uh, who's wearing a burpee shirt. So you're Absolutely. representing burpee uh, Yep, I today. have two jobs at the company. <laughs> <laughs> you're also like the main seed buyer I for am. the entire corporation. Yes. If you can't get your seed, ask him. He knows where it's. <laughs> he knows where the bags of it are. But anyway, tell us about the. I think you got new peppers. We're yes, going to be talking we're about. Very excited here. about Mardi Gras peppers. Mardi Gras is fun. Is a snack series pepper snack uh, series so we're not snack, talking big bell for a salad no nope, these are those small peppers that you find in bags in the grocery store they're colorful mothers are putting them in their kids uh, lunch boxes instead of carrots uh, they're sweet four colors which is unusual you usually only see three and, and, and so we've got three here but we also have a purple so these are the actual fruits right off the plants I've tasted one earlier fabulous yes there, I, I would take that in my lunchbox as a snack <laughs> instead of a Snickers bar. <laughs> Truly, it's better for me. But here's the purple one down here, too. So you do have four kind of identical plants with four different colors. Correct. Right? And, and I actually have them in my garden planted in like a little cluster. So it's almost clump coming up like one thing. With yeah, it's perfect. Four colors. So um, we're really excited. This is a big introduction for us. Um, good disease what, resistance and things like excellent that. Excellent disease resistance. Very uniform between all colors and I think uh, consumers and growers are, are gonna love this. That's a great way to get kids, I think, into the garden. Now you've got another pepper you were telling us about uh, back here called roulette. What's this one about? This has been a lot of fun. This pepper, well, you've got uh, some you of the can actually play there. a lot of tricks with your friends, but <laughs> roulette is a sweet habanero. So like myself, I don't like heat. Um, but give me the flavor, and this is what this pepper does. It gives all the flavor of a habanero so, so, okay, so with, I've got without the not, burn. I have not tried one of these yet. Mmm, no burn at all. But yeah, there's a citrusy kind of a flavor to it. 
If you get in it's, towards uh, and eat some of the seeds, you'll, yeah, you'll yeah. get some heat, Avoid that. but very little. That's nice. Thin, fairly thin skin. It's, mm -hmm. very, it's very snacky again, but I think you could probably cook with this, Absolutely. toss it into salads and things. And here's the plant we're looking so at. So here, you know, you can see how productive it is. Deep inside, look at all those Look at all those peppers. I mean, it just produces like crazy. The key is don't plant this next to your habanero and mix them up accidentally. Keep I don't them, know. I don't uh, think they're going to cross. Keep, no, um, but keep. I just don't want to get the signage wrong where you accidentally absolutely. grab the wrong and, pepper. But you can have fun with your friends. I've done this with a few people at work where you say, um, do you want a pepper? And they look and I am not going to eat a habanero. Oh, and you just chow down on it. Yeah, I'm like, don't watch. Even break a and then I pretend like it's hot. And then I start laughing. Oh. And they're like, what's so funny? Because I said it's sweet. Oh, and then you give them one, but you actually give them a real habanero. Yeah, no, and then no, you take no. them to the emergency room. I'm not no, as no. clever as you are. <laughs> anyway, well, new peppers from Burpee. Sweet ones and sweet ones. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. All right, nice thank work. you, Chris. Yeah, that's good. Olivia, you want one? <laughs> I want to try. It's not hot, but it looks it. Scare your friends. Well, she doesn't like peppers. Well, we got to cut that out. <laughs>